Thank you for joining today's special COVID-19 briefing. This is an important time in the pandemic, so we appreciate your covering today's announcement. Today's briefing is for press only, but as usual, we are live streaming on the Health Department's YouTube channel. Members of the public are encouraged to check the Health Department's or City's social media accounts for the link to the briefing. Because of today's topic and our having multiple speakers, today's briefing will run until 11 a.m. Today, we'll hear remarks from Mayor Jim Kenney and Health Commissioner Dr. Cheryl Bedigal. Today, we are also joined by Armando, who will then present both sets of remarks in Spanish, and then I'll open up to questions from the press. We ask that media outlets coordinate internally to ensure that only one representative asks questions and that they limit their questions to three or fewer. If we have time then, we will move into a second round to allow for more questions. Please keep your questions focused on the topic of the COVID pandemic in today's announcement. With that out of the way, Mayor, would you start us off? I apologize, Mayor, it looks like you're muted. One second. You okay? Yep, thank you. Well, thanks for joining today. And I wanna to start by thanking Dr. Bedigal and the Health Department for their tireless work managing the ongoing COVID-19 crisis. I wanna recognize all the Philadelphians taking precautions every day to protect themselves and others. Thank you for getting vaccinated. Thank you for wearing a mask. Thank you for getting tested and staying home when you don't feel good. These choices make a difference. And we've come, to, we've, and we've come an incredibly long way since the beginning of the pandemic, but there's still work to be done. New cases and hospitalizations are rising in Philadelphia and nationally. And with winter just around the corner, we must do more to protect our residents. So in a moment, Dr. Bedigal will announce why we are rolling out vaccination requirements for food establishments. The city's indoor mask mandate helped us keep our case rates among the lowest in Pennsylvania this fall. The vaccine mandate for food establishments where masking is not feasible will complement the effective mask policy. If you have not yet completed your vaccination series, now is the time to, to, to start so you'll be covered by the time this fully goes into effect. Best of all, you'll be better protected against COVID-19 and you'll be helping our city get closer to the end of this mess. Now I'll turn it over to Dr. Bedigal uh, for more information. Thank you, Mayor. Recently, you've heard me talking a lot about a winter wave. We've seen COVID cases go up in Europe, in the upper Midwest, and more recently, just about everywhere else in the United States. Pennsylvania has one of the fastest rising case counts in the country, and we've seen our own case rates double in just the last couple of weeks. Hospitalizations are up more than 50% in the past couple of weeks as well. So this isn't just a matter of picking up mild or asymptomatic cases. There is no single answer to why case rates are rising. Instead, there are a few. Colder weather driving folks inside and holiday gatherings are probably the biggest drivers. Looking forward, the cold weather isn't gonna stop. And as much as we warn against it, we know that some people will still get together for the holidays. And now with the ever more transmissible Omicron variant on the horizon, this winter looks like it could be very difficult. We have to do something to slow the spread now before it's too late. We know that the most dangerous situation in the pandemic at this point is when someone is unmasked and around people from other households, like when they're eating or drinking indoors. This is what happens in indoor establishments that serve food every day. Given the higher case rates we're seeing, this is an important place to look to help cut our risk. I don't wanna close our restaurants or the other types of businesses that serve food. They've been through too much over the last two years and they're an important part of the life of our city. I want them to stay open and operate safely. Since we can't make people wear masks when they're eating, we need to increase the vaccination rate of people in those situations. So today we're announcing an indoor food establishment vaccine mandate. Other big cities like New York City, San Francisco, and New Orleans have been doing this for a while now and showing that it can be done smoothly. This announcement will help reduce the risk of spreading COVID when people are enjoying our city's restaurants, and other establishments that serve food. So here are the details. Starting January 3rd, any place that sells food or drink to be consumed on site will have to require that everyone who enters be fully vaccinated against COVID-19. For the first two weeks, so January 3rd through the 17th, establishments may choose to accept proof of a negative COVID test in lieu of proof of vaccination. That negative COVID test must have been from the last 24 hours. 
then after January 17th, negative COVID-19 tests will no longer be accepted and everyone must have completed their primary COVID vaccination series, meaning they've had one shot of J&J or two shots of Moderna or Pfizer. This mandate applies where you can eat together indoors. Places like indoor restaurants, bars, sports venues that serve food, movie theaters, catering halls, and cafes within larger establishments. Staff and children age five and three months to 11 must have had one dose of vaccine by January 3rd and must complete their vaccine series by February 3rd. Staff will have to test weekly until they're fully vaccinated. We've got a more full list of covered establishments being posted in a blog on the COVID website today. Examples of places where this mandate will not apply include schools and daycares, hospitals, grocery stores and convenience stores and soup kitchens and other sites that serve vulnerable populations. There are people who are exempted from this mandate because they cannot be vaccinated. Children younger than five years and three months don't need to comply with this mandate, nor do people with valid medical or religious exemptions. Those folks will still be required to show proof of a negative COVID test within 24 hours if they're going into an establishment that seats more than a thousand people. Finally, as with all of our COVID regulations and mandates, if you see an establishment not following the rules, you can call 311 and we'll send out inspectors to educate them on the new mandate and to enforce if necessary. As the mayor said earlier, Philadelphia is doing a great job staying masked and getting vaccinated. But with hundreds of thousands of Philadelphians who are eligible for vaccine but not yet fully vaccinated, we need this additional safety measure to make us safer and avoid some of the worst outcomes that we've seen in other states. Thank you for everything each and every one of you has done to keep us safe. If you haven't gotten your vaccine yet, there's still time to get fully vaccinated before this mandate goes into effect. And you can keep going out to eat and to enjoy yourself at covered entertainment venues safely. There are still hundreds of locations throughout the city administering COVID vaccine. We've heard that there might be a week or two wait for an appointment at some pharmacies, but our health department pop-up clinics and health centers have plenty of capacity and the ability to set appointments or just walk in. You can find the nearest vaccine sites on phila.gov slash vaccine or by visiting vaccines.gov. Thank you. First up, we'll go to Jeff Cole from Fox 29. Go ahead, Jeff. Yes. Okay, I'm sorry. Here we are. Uh, first with Dr. Bettigold. Uh, Dr. Bettigold, why wait until the 3rd of January? What was your thinking in terms of, uh, of not putting it in prior to the holiday season when obviously people will be gathering, uh, you know, together? So we talked a lot about what the implementation should, they should be, and we are asking people to really limit their gathering. But uh, we do need to give the businesses time to implement. And you know this is this is a large scale change for them. So we're trying to put it in place as soon as possible, but with an understanding of what will be involved for businesses that are undertaking this. Do you expect that because you're going to give them that time, it's inevitable that you will get a jump in case counts post Christmas as you have post Thanksgiving? So the biggest concern about holiday gatherings isn't so much what, hap what is happening in businesses, although we are obviously very concerned about that, it's also what's happening in people's homes. And so I, you know, I think from what we saw at Thanksgiving, which is very much a home holiday, we saw a very clear bump in cases after Thanksgiving. We are asking people to be more careful over Christmas and the Christmas holidays and to limit the number of people they gather with, to ask if people are coming over, have them do a rapid test, um, and certainly don't come over if they're having any symptoms or have been in contact with somebody with COVID. We all need to be careful. Final question for the mayor, if I could. Mayor, uh, you folks, uh, I think Dr. Bettigold said, we certainly do not want to shut uh, restaurants down. However, what was your calculation in terms of the impact on restaurants with this mandate going into effect uh, and, and places that serve food, particularly smaller places that may not have the staff to check uh, vaccination records as folks come in? I, I was in New York two weeks ago. Um, it's, it's not a problem. It worked very smoothly in restaurants, in delis, at theaters. It wasn't, wasn't an issue at all. Just bring your ID and your Vax card uh, and uh, everything went smooth. And you expect these businesses to, to they, they won't have to shut down. They'll be able to hang on here. I think that, yeah, I think that's why we're doing this is to, is to stop 
the the real serious thing and, and shutting stuff down again. Uh, but again, uh, based on my experience in New York two weeks ago, things were very smooth. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Next up, we'll go to Annie McCormick from Channel 6. Go ahead, Annie. Hello, um, I have a couple questions, some for clarification. I apologize if you said this, but um, how does this affect the restaurants in our common areas, like hotels, the Wells Fargo <laughs> Center, places like that? So, Mayor, I can respond to that if you'd like. Yes, please. So this applies to any place that serves food or drink, but to the spaces where that would be served. So it applies to most of the Wells Fargo Center because people eat and drink in that big space. Um, to a hotel restaurant, it would just apply to that restaurant. Um, in a food court, for example, it would apply, it, they would need to cordon off the seating area and have somebody checking vaccines in that seating area. So it's just the area where food is being served and drink is, is being served for on-site consumption. Okay, so not for hotel guests or anything like that. Hotel guests aren't, it isn't mandatory for them to have a vaccine traveling in town? Only to eat in the hotel restaurant, but not simply to, to enter the hotel. Okay, um, my second question is, um, and actually, Mayor, I'm curious to know when you were in New York, if you use the Excelsior app, which is what New York has rolled out, where you can combine your driver's license, your vaccine card mandate, mm -hmm. um, and if that's something that you're considering having I here just, in Philadelphia, if there's been any discussions with something like that with any companies. I just took my passport and my vax card. That was a, I didn't, I didn't, wasn't even aware of the, of the app. But I'm, I mean, I'm not that app friendly. But um, my passport and my vax card was got me through everything I needed to get through. Um, and then also. In regards to following up on Jeff's question about enforcement, um, I think now we're throwing in another thing that people um, in the restaurants have to check before it was when you said either mask or vaccine mandate, they're asking for the car, but now with the test until January 17th, are you gonna be doing any, providing any resources and de-escalation guidance for a lot of the really young people that work in there, especially considering that we have a lot of violence going on right now? What does violence have to do with checking your VAX card? Well, people are violent, Mayor. I mean, people, it takes, I, I, you notice it. People I don't, snap I don't see, I don't see the, days. I don't see the connection at all, to tell you the truth. Either you don't see a connection between vax card and you're vaccinated or you're not. It, I don't know what that, how that relates to violence, but that's maybe I didn't explain it well enough. A okay. young worker yeah. is in the front of the restaurant, a person, a customer comes in, they are arguing with them, they show them a test. What does that young person do? They have to ask, is that test taken within 24 hours? The person gives them a hard time about the vaccine mandate. That's what I'm talking about. Oh. We're in a time right now where there is a lot of violence all over the place. People snap easily. Is yeah. the city going to be offering any de-escalation guidance? Um, Dr. Bettigal, do you have any idea about that? Because So, you know, we're going to be uh, posting a variety of resources for businesses that are going to be implementing this and our environmental health services inspectors will be doing education with businesses as their first step. So if a violation is reported, they'll go out. I think, you know, I think it could be useful to, um, to include in that some resources on how do you have this conversation with people. That said, you know, I think we all know that there are people out there who are going to argue with, with anything that's said. And this comes up with the mask mandate as well. Um, and what we're asking businesses to do is to be checking, to be careful. Um, you know, if if there's a situation where someone is becoming belligerent, that's a, a, an issue for which they should be calling for security, calling police if they have to. We hope not. But you know, nobody should be treating businesses in that way. And I don't think we should see it as as a given that because somebody's asking for a, uh, for a vaccine card or asking somebody to wear a mask, that it's reasonable for that person to, and I know that's not what you were trying to say, but you know, the idea that this is somehow causal, um, it, it's not causal, it's, it, we're in a, a point in time where people are reacting in unreasonable ways to, to reasonable safety precautions. And those are questions from restaurants. That's why I'm asking them. So thank you for answering it, Dr. Bedeval, I appreciate it. All right, thank you very much, Annie. Next up, we're gonna to go to Laura McChrystal from the Inquirer. Go ahead, Laura. Hi, um, <clears throat> excuse me, Dr. Bonagle, I first wanted to 
clarify um, what you said about the Wells Fargo Center. You said it would apply to most of the Wells Fargo Center. Can you clarify, like, if someone wants to, you know, attend a Flyers game or a Sixers game, do they need to be vaccinated? They do, unless they have an exemption. Yeah, so when I said most of the Wells Fargo Center, if, if there's a back office where somebody is working um, that is not a place that food or drink is served, then those small spaces wouldn't be covered. But the Wells Fargo Center, people coming to games, you know, the main space would be covered. Okay. Um, and Mayor Kenny, I'm wondering if you could just sort of explain a little bit more kind of the, the thought process on implementing this, you know, how long has it been that you've been talking about it with Dr. Bedigal? What was kind of the tipping point? Was there one in your mind as to why this is necessary now? Tipping point was our case counts and hospitalizations. Uh, we just don't want to go back to where we were a year ago. Um, and it's really not that much of a burden to ask people to be vaccinated, which I don't understand why anyone wouldn't get vaccinated. Uh, or to or to um, provide a card that shows that vaccination. So had to do with case counts, had to do with the percentage of, of positive case counts and the hospitalizations. Okay, and one last question on enforcement. I know there's been a couple of questions on that already, but will it essentially be the same way that the mask mandate has been enforced? It's just complaint-based or sort of regular food inspections that happen? Exactly, uh, oh, sorry. No, Doc, I'm sorry. Doctor, could you respond? Sure, yes, it'll be the same as uh, other COVID related infractions. So it'll be environmental health services. Uh, it will be complaint driven and uh, the regular food inspections and they will start with education um, and go to other forms of enforcement which can include fines of up to $2,000 a day um, if necessary, hoping not to get there. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Laura. Next up, we'll go to David Melander. Go ahead, David. I, I have a couple questions. One, some clarification about the masking for the. So, what you're saying is for people that are going to be attending games at the Wells Fargo Center or even Lincoln Financial Field, will there be vaccination proof for them just to enter the building now going forward? So, for Wells Fargo, yes. For uh, Lincoln Financial Field, it'll depend. The outdoor areas are not covered by this mandate. It only applies indoors. And so with the weather being cold, are there, has, have there been any discussions about potentially masking for outdoor events, especially with the Eagles games coming up the next couple of weeks? So we aren't changing the mask mandate at this time. It still applies to indoor spaces, but not to outdoor spaces. We're watching the information on Omicron as it comes in very closely. We could make a change if, there, if we're seeing evidence of outdoor transmission, but I have not seen that yet. And last one from Mayor Kenny, your thoughts about how um, the large gatherings in sports stadiums right now with these new variants coming out, they, is it too soon to say to have these stadiums be at 100 percent capacity right now um I, I just follow what dr Bedigal and the health department uh advises so at this point we we should be fine um and if people were, would all get vaccinated uh we wouldn't be even having this discussion all right thank you very much david next up we're going to go to jaime Bessero from telemundo go ahead yeah, hello. This question is for Armando. Hola, Jaime. Buenos días. Hola, Armando. Buenos días. Armando, mi pregunta es si cambiarán eh, el mandato de mascarillas en escuelas como en otras partes de Pensilvania. ¿Y a quién se la dedicas la pregunta? Eh, a cualquiera de los dos, al alcalde o a la doctora. Bien. The question is either for the mayor or for Dr. Perigol. The question is, is there's going to be a, man, a change in the mandate for masks in school as it has been elsewhere in Pennsylvania? Doctor? No, Philadelphia's mask mandate will continue, including in schools and daycare centers. And we really want to make sure that everybody knows that. There's no change because of the state change. Quiero que quede okay, claro siguiente... que no va a haber un cambio al mandato de las mascarillas, ni para las escuelas, ni para los centros de cuidado de los niños. Va a quedar igual, no va a haber ningún cambio en Filadelfia. ¿Cuál es tu siguiente pregunta, Jaime? Sí, Armando, la siguiente sería, 
¿Cómo se aseguran de que se cumpla el mandato de la vacunación? Y si sabemos de lugares como cines o teatros en la ciudad que las deban cumplir y no las han revisado. Y no las han realizado. But the question is, how can we ensure that the mandate for vaccination is in full compliance? And if you have any notice of any movie cinemas or any theaters where this has not been done, So this will go into effect January 3rd. It will affect movie theaters. Um, what people should expect to see is somebody checking vaccination status at the door. So if that is not happening, if you go to a movie and you don't see that, you would call 311, they'll report to our environmental health unit and the environmental health units uh, inspectors will go out and um, assess. Is that medida? Toma vigencia el día 3 de enero en los cinemas que están incluidos, obviamente. Lo que la gente puede esperar es que vaya a encontrarse con alguien que esté revisando este estatus de vacunación según ingresan al local. Si eso no sucediera y ven que no se está cumpliendo con este mandato, lo que hay que hacer es que hay que llamar al 311, al Departamento de Salud Medioambiental, para que envíen algunos de sus inspectores para revisar lo que está sucediendo o para hacer cumplir con el mandato de la ciudad. Gracias, Jaime. Gracias. Thank you very much, Jaime. Next, we're going to go to Jack Tomzik from Metro. Go ahead, Jack. Thanks. Uh, one question for Dr. Bedigal. Has there been evidence of a uh, spread at restaurants or these other indoor sites? So there's evidence of spread in restaurants from multiple case studies. And then Drexel released a study last week that showed that closing down restaurants decreased in, in places that did close indoor dining, decreased transmission by 61%. We do not want to close our restaurants. So that's the reason for a vaccine mandate um, is to avoid those closures. And, um, you know, I, I remember there being a, a rule that, you know, businesses could either uh, have a vaccine mandate or enforce masking. So does this mean for like a movie theater or something that masks will not have to be worn since there is a vaccine mandate? So with the indoor mask mandate, we created a carve out for businesses that wanted to be strictly vaccine only. No exemptions. Anybody who comes in, whether they're staff or a patron, would be vaccinated. That isn't changing. So this vaccine mandate does have exemptions for people with religious or medical reasons not to get vaccinated and for young children who are too young to get vaccinated. So unless a business opts to be strictly 100% vaccine only, the mask mandate still applies. And then for the mayor, uh, you know, restaurants have struggled since the beginning of the pandemic. Some of them are worried about outdoor dining maybe the streetery is not being available in the new year for, for their neighborhood. But uh, so what's your message to these restaurant owners think this will hurt their business or make it more difficult? I think this won't hurt their business. It's going to help their business. Go have all more people vaccinated, which will keep the case counts down, which will allow them to be more open than, than not. Um, the streetery issue, I was, um, and I'm in favor of keeping them all. Uh, council had a different view and want to have to approve them in certain neighborhoods. And that's, That was their will. Um, but, um, you know, I've talked to a lot of restaurant owners who have outdoor dining and have done well with outdoor dining. So the, we're just trying to get as many people vaccinated as possible. And the mandate will get a certain percentage of people that are, are unvaccinated vaccinated and will make things better for everybody. Thank you. Thank you very much, Jack. Next up, we're going to go to Miguel from Channel 10. Go ahead, Miguel. Hey guys, can you hear me all right? Yep. All right, perfect. Um, so I know obviously we're monitoring this, uh, you know, as as cases come and go, but uh, what are we looking at when it comes to boosters? We're getting to December, the, for the time when a lot of people started their vaccination, at least our health professionals. Um, so are we, are we concerned, you know, that if people that haven't gotten boosted, haven't been able to get boosted, won't have the same efficacy? So we do want everyone who's eligible for a booster to get boosted. Um, in Philadelphia, we have given 170,000 boosters at this stage. So a lot of them, but that clearly leaves a lot of people who need a booster. So I would really, really encourage anybody who's 18 or over, actually scratch that, anyone who's 16 or over 
um, to get their booster if they're six months out from their Moderna or Pfizer vaccine or if they're two months out from their Johnson & Johnson vaccine. But as of right now, that's not going to play into the VAX requirement. No, this is only for completing your primary series, meaning the one J&J or two Pfizer or Moderna. And just for my clarification, then, um, I, obviously, this doesn't include outdoors. So that includes like Christmas Village and these other outdoor venues that do sell food and have people congregate. That's correct. So it, this doesn't include outdoors. Perfect. Thank you. Thank you very much, Miguel. Um... I saw Pat Loeb from KYW on here. Pat, do you have a question before we move to a second round? Uh, thanks. I um, had to step away for a minute, so I wasn't sure if this had been asked, but have there been any more Omicron cases confirmed in the city? Um, we have, I believe, I not 100% sure this is the correct number, so I don't want to get this wrong, but I believe that we have at least a couple more. We will have more. You know, we're waiting for final confirmation on some more. Um, this, this, is, this is clearly in the community to some degree. It's still true that almost all of our cases in Philly are Delta, though. Thank you. Thank you very much. We've gone through everybody for our first round. Now we'll go to a second round. Uh, we'll start back with David Melander. Go ahead, Dave. I just have a quick follow-up question. Uh, so for those who are gonna be attending a, a games at the Wells Fargo Center, will this, uh, does this mandate go into effect now or will this officially go into effect January 3rd? This goes into effect January 3rd. I would still really encourage anybody who's going to a game at Wells Fargo to be fully vaccinated and to keep their mask on. Okay, thank you very much. Thank you, David. Uh, Andy McCormick, you're up again. Go ahead. Um, and I also want to ask too, and you mentioned other cities are doing this. Um, a lot of those other cities that are implementing this also in gyms, um, pretty much all over, it goes beyond indoor dining. So is this, would you say that maybe this is a test to see how this goes and then if things get worse or case counts go up that you might implement them in other areas? Is that in your discussions? Have you had any discussions like that? Doctor. So what we've tried to do throughout is to implement the least restrictive measures necessary. So this appears to be what's necessary at this moment. We're gonna watch case counts and see what happens. So I can't make any comment on what might be needed later because it really depends on what happens with our case counts what happens with hospitalizations. Okay, and then another question too, um, and I, I did ask this earlier, but I don't think I got an answer. And I don't know if Tumar's on this call or not as well. Are there any discussions with any companies that are centralizing where you can put your vaccine information? Other cities are using these beyond New York. Has Philadelphia had any conversations to try to do something like that? Or is there a place that people can go to if they've lost their vaccine card? Good, good morning. Good morning, Annie. I'll actually defer to Dr. Sher. I would just say in some of our conversations last week with a lot of the stakeholders that you all are asking questions of, uh, some of them just mentioned that they had capacity or had already been planning capacity to um, engage various tech companies to help them with the management and operations of this. But I'll let, I'll let Dr. Sher, uh, defer to Dr. Sher on the question. Real quick, though, but Tumar, has there been like any like um, biddings that have happened for any companies to try to, you know, to, to have an app? Are you getting not, any, is not, any bids or anything from, like that? Yeah, not from the city perspective. Uh, most of what we've seen is that various uh, organizers or event organizers such as Made in America and other events have incorporated their, they incorporated their own um, vaccination check status. Uh, and use of applications. And like I said, some of the stakeholders we've been talking to have just been sort of telling us about some of the different opportunities that they're interested in working with or companies that they they will engage with to sort of help them operationalize this mandate. Got it, thank you. And I would have, for anybody who's lost their card or needs proof of vaccination, they can go to phila.gov slash COVID. We have that information posted in the FAQ there, or they can call 215-685-5488. Um, we can get them a replacement card. 
uh, there's information there about how to how to access your information. Thank you. Thank you all very much. Uh, Laura McChrystal from the Inquirer has a second round. Go ahead, Laura. Hey, um, is there any thought to how long this will stay in place, or will the official regulation, you know, come with an end date for starters? It doesn't come with an end date because we don't know what's coming. You know, we have winter and Omicron on the horizon. It's very hard to predict what could happen next. Um, we do want to roll this back as soon as we can, but that's going to depend on our case rates and our hospitalization rates. Okay. Um, and another clarifying question, would this also apply, I assume, to, you know, even a like a Starbucks or a place where people tend to get takeout food, I guess, unless they wanted to like stop letting people sit down and eat there? Exactly. If they serve food or drink for on-site consumption, it's going to apply. Okay. Um, I'm also wondering, was there any thought to going, you know, broader with this mandate? Like I know New York City does more than just places where people eat. It's like a, a broader swath of indoor venues. So as I mentioned, we've tried to stay with the least restrictive necessary. So because we think that a lot of transmission is happening, as far as we can tell from the evidence in the research uh, literature and from our case investigations, people take off their masks to eat and drink. And you know that's when they're passing this. So that's why we've restricted it for right now to places that serve food or drink for on-site consumption. All right, thank you very much. Uh, I do have another round of questions from Jeff Cole from Fox 29. Go ahead, Jeff. Yeah, so Dr. Bettergold, I'm sorry, you've mentioned this, but I think I, I missed it as I was scribbling down here. Would you talk about what are the mandates for staff inside places that are serving food? Must they be vaccinated or, or they, will they show a test of some type? So this does include staff of establishments that serve food and drink for on-site con uh, consumption. Um, it, they have a bit more time. So they would need one dose by January 3rd, a second dose by February 3rd. Um, during that time, until they're fully vaccinated, they would need to test weekly. That extra, I should say that extra bit of time also applies to children um, five and three months through age 11. They also have the, the requirement for one dose by January 3rd, second dose by February 3rd, just because many of them haven't had a uh, chance to get vaccinated yet. Uh, also, have, um, have any smaller establishments or, or even sort of smaller sort of venues, but there are many of them, has McDonald's or Starbucks or anybody said to you, you know what? We're simply not going to have any more in dining anymore in uh, in uh, in building dining anymore. Everything will be takeout as a result of this. Do you expect that, or have you been told that that will happen? I have not heard that. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Jeff. Uh, seeing that we have some time left, this is the last call for questions. Please raise your hand, and we'll allow you to unmute. With no further questions, that will conclude our time today. Thank you all for joining us and for covering this important announcement. As a reminder, Dr. Bettigold's regularly scheduled biweekly COVID briefing is scheduled for Wednesday at 10 a.m. and we hope to see you then. Thank you again.